Hi guys, welcome back. We're on the final lesson of our first class in a series of classes that's going to teach you commercial refrigeration for air conditioning technicians. This was rather short and and just a brief overview of what we're going to learn in depth for the rest of the classes. So we'll do a quick review here and then we'll take a look forward to see what's in store in the next class that you can take. So the four basic components of a refrigeration system are the same as those of an air conditioning system. We did learn the metering device and refrigeration system lowers the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant much lower than a residential air conditioning system. The evaporator, evaporator does basically the same thing. It absorbs the heat, changes the state of the refrigerant, um, absorbs some superheat. The compressors are a little bit different. They are designed to compress low density vapor to higher pressures, so there is a bit of a difference between the two. And the condensers are all nearly identical. They just reject the heat from the refrigerant vapor and adds a little bit of subcooling before it shoots it back to the metering device. We'll learn about in-depth metering devices, evaporators, compressors, and condensers and refrigeration systems in the follow-on course. We talked about the uh, four basic components of re the refrigeration system and the refrigeration cycle and we'll review that just quickly here so we have high pressure high temperature superheated vapor leaving the compressor it enters the condenser and begins desuperheating at the beginning of the condenser travels through the condenser and it changes state from vapor to liquids where it's where it's just dumping all and just rejecting all the heat that it picked up inside the box the tail end of the condenser we have subcooling happening so we have a solid column of liquid flowing down the liquid line until it hits the metering device. Metering device, in this case the TXV, lowers the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant and it is immediately at saturation, at its saturation point and is changing state as it enters the evaporator and it's boiling off and changing state as picking up heat from that refrigerator, refrigerated box. The tail end of that evaporator it's picking up superheat, so we have 100% vapor as it returns back to the compressor and it begins that refrigeration cycle all over again. We also talked about the, the uh, different temperature ranges of commercial refrigeration. This course is going to discuss medium and low temperature units, and those we'll review those. That's uh, 35 to 37 degrees for walk-in refrigerators and coolers. The reach-in refrigerator or cooler is 38 to 40 degrees. Remember, this is the walk-in refrigerator is for large bulk, longer-term storage. Reach-in refrigerators or coolers are for convenience and daily use. The walk-in freezer is minus 10 degrees, and the reach-in freezer is zero degrees. The same thing with the walk-in and reach-in freezers. These long-term storage, daily use, and convenience. Throughout the rest of the classes in the series of classes, these are the temperature ranges that we're going to be discussing. So what what's what's in store next? The next class is the evaporator. So we'll go over the functions of the evaporator, the uh, temperature difference across the evaporator, and it's different than that of residential air conditioning systems. We'll look at the different evaporator types and styles as well. Uh, we'll explain in detail and learn latent heat, sensible heat, and superheat. This is really important for uh, commercial refrigeration. And then we'll explain the re relationship between um, the evaporator TD and humidity and how humidity affects that. And then this is the, the big difference here is in residential and commercial refrigeration is the evaporator needs to be defrost. So there's a several different types of defrost, defrost methods and the defrost timers so we'll go into that in detail as well so that is the end of your first class i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next if you have any questions about this lesson please just post it right there um, beneath the video and we'll get it answered for you